Hello, I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. Welcome to the Stocks in Action show. Today we're looking at the stock results during their respective financial year, dividends are distributed and their latest updates. Lastly, we'll take a quick glance at developments across the ASX, so stay tuned. Firstly, shares of global payment solutions provider Split It Payments are up so far today after the company reported its half-year results for the six-month period to the 30th of June. They reported a record first-half year performance with strong growth across its key metrics of merchant sales volume, revenue, merchants and shoppers. The company reported merchant sales volume of 172.5 million US dollars. That's up 94 percent, while the gross revenue is up 79.7 percent to 5.5 million dollars. The company stated total merchants were up 167 percent to 2,800. Total shoppers are up 83 percent. Additionally, the company recently launched Split It Plus to accelerate further merchant adoption. Their credit card network grew significantly with the addition of the new Union Pay International Partnership. Moving on, Mesoblast, a global leader in allogeneic cellular medicines for inflationary diseases. Mesoblast shares were trading down so far today as the company released app financial results for the fourth quarter and full year ending 30th of June. The company has a balance sheet cash on hand of 136.9 million US dollars. The royalty revenues on sales of Temcel in Japan rose by 10% to 7.2 million US dollars for the year ending June 30th. Temcel is for the treatment of acute graft versus host disease. The company's loss after tax for financial year 2021 was 98.8 million US dollars compared to 77.9 million dollars for financial year 2020. The net loss attributable to ordinary shareholders was 16.33 US cents per share for financial year 2021 compared with 14.74 US cents for 2020. Next, shares of Regis Resources, a gold and mineral explorer, are trading down so far today after their financial results for 2021. The company reported a net profit after tax of $146 million at an 18% net profit after tax margin. Revenue of $819 million is reported from the sale of gold, while it achieved slow growth across key metrics. It had an EBITDA of $403 million and generated $276 million of cash flow from operating activities. Regis also confirmed $61 million as fully frank dividends to shareholders at $0.03 cents per share. The company also acquired a 30% interest in the Tropicana Gold project that was in line with its growth strategy. For financial year 2022, Regis has set solid production guidance at Duketon. It also expects a significant increase in total production from Tropicana Gold. Next, let's take a look at IGO, a nickel and gold focus mining and exploration company. They saw their shares trading down today after they reported a record-breaking 254% growth in financial year 2021, ending on the 30th of June. IGO struck a record net profit after tax for financial year 2021 of $549 million at a 254% improvement over financial year 2020. IGO also completed a new lithium joint venture with Tianqi on the 30th of June. Now, Tianqi Lithium Corp is a Chinese mining and manufacturing company. The acquisition was funded through the successful divestment of Tropicana to Regis Resources back in May, and also a successful capital raising. IGO claims to continue its focus on generating organic and inorganic growth opportunities. Lastly, let's take a look at the shares of California-based e-commerce company Zebit. They're trading up today after the company released their financial results for the six months ending 30th of June. They announced that it had outperformed its 12-month IPO prospectus forecast ending on the 30th of June. The company surpassed the revenue by 6.5 million US dollars and booked a bad debts reserve of 10.9%. The company expects its second half of financial year 2021 revenue to hover between 83.9 million US dollars and 93.9 million US dollars. 
Zebit also solidified a supplier partnership with Unilever subsidiary, enable it to test sell every large bulk grocery items across disposable goods, dry goods, as well as frozen and refrigerated products. The decision to enter this category through the better launch of Zebit Grocery was driven by significant demand from customers and is consistent with its long-term goal to be a one-stop online retail destination. Now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned. I'll be back with more trending updates for the Australian markets. Hi, I'm Sage, and get ready to take the crypto ride with me on Kalkine TV. Watch the crypto buzz every Tuesday and join the excitement at Kalkine TV from Bitcoins to NFTs to Dogecoin and DeFi. We have updates about everything around these digital currencies. Understand the investing rationale and the risks involved in the space with me, Sage, on Crypto Buzz. Keep watching Kalkine TV. And welcome back. This is Rachel, your host, live from Kalkine Studios, and you're watching the Stocks in Action show. Before we wrap up, let's quickly glimpse through developments across the equity and commodity markets. The S&P ASX 200 is up today, gaining 13.8 points or 0.18 percent to 7,518.3. Shares in Kogan.com are up 6.88 percent. Y State Global shares are up 5.25 percent. Six out of 11 sectors are higher along the S&P ASX 200 index. Information technology is the best performing sector so far today, while energy is today's worst performing sector. That's all from me for now. Stay tuned to Kalkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, the economy, diverse themes and sectors. I'm Rachel signing off for Kalkine TV.